God is so close to the corner, we don't want him to fall down the cliff. Yes. Maybe I will give uh, one permanently to Tatsui because he will be responding to questions. Yeah, you share the other one. Thank you, Tansri, for taking us that journey to some of the struggles that are going on uh, globally, internationally, in so many different, so many different ways, and how all the tensions and contradictions become so complicated, and uh, every day is a new journey sometimes for many, many people. Uh, I like that the three panelists to begin the panel discussion by asking, sharing something, commenting or asking a question. The first one will be Claude. Yeah? You will have to explain to him again. But basically what I, what I want uh, uh, Tashri uh, uh, Rizali is meant to, to respond to is this conference that we are having is on decolonization of people's minds and decolonization of what is taught in the colleges and universities. And it is the, it is the, uh, the dominant assumption is that a lot of what is taught and the students that are being created are basically taught and brought up within the European social sciences and so on. And there's a move to de-link from these social sciences. Does he think that this decolonization agenda is worth pursuing? Or does he think that considering global politics, the state of Europe, the power of Europe, the power of the United States, etc., etc., uh, that this will not be possible uh, for a very long time? Or if he has got any suggestions of how we can do it from his vast experience, as a, uh, as a diplomat and also in, as an environmentalist because as an environmentalist he is aware of the entire the, the debate on biodiversity, biodiversity. Now this is a very st strong feature. Human beings also have their diversity and that diversity is linked to their, their knowledge systems. Those knowledge systems have been devastated. Can they be restored? Is it worth restoring them? Those are the questions I would like him to respond to. There's uh, a lot of questions. Yeah, but, but of course one should not give up the struggle to try to put things right. I mean, if you look at the, the advantage taken by uh, by pharmaceutical companies in, in the West in relation to patents uh, where uh, the, the tree is grown here like Yakanti uh, Neem tree and there are 20-30 patents as far as I know that have been patented by Japanese, uh, Swiss, uh, Americans claiming the right <coughs> to that tree but, but um, the sheer effrontery about doing this kind of thing and being allowed by law out there in the whenever you dispute, being allowed to get away with it or to stop other people from providing what is this uh, black uh, bit, uh, medicine that, uh, yeah, generic, generic medicine from coming in to help people and, uh, because they are cheaper. So these things are happening. But, I, I, what I am dismayed about is the, the attention span is not there over time. <clears throat> they will fight you in the course over and over and over. Believe you me, it's happened. Uh, when I was part of the Third World, uh, that Martin Cause group, we, we understood to just filibuster and delay, they will do it. So, uh, at a certain
same time, people are beginning to be preoccupied with other things. One of which is that people now are feeling more vulnerable than what they were like when my father's time or grandfather's time. They, they, now we are more vulnerable. We can go up on a bus and somebody can blow himself and his grandmother and all of us at the same time. And that's the vulnerability about uh, whatever savings you have now. Because the, the, the value of certain money is in developing what are not as strong. So the, you can, whatever pension savings you have, would amount to very little. You can afford to buy a house. Now a civil servant in Malaysia, uh, embarking on his life in the government service, cannot contemplate a time when, as in my case, I could, uh, buy a house by the time you retire. You don't have that kind of money. Because houses go up. So, so their savings are vulnerable. So there are so many other aspects. So people are more concerned. So how do you then redirect the attention of these people? We need them to fight, to fight for us to dealing with this. Can you deal with both or a whole lot of many other things? So this is the kind of, of question that that I get into. And then I, I think, if you don't mind, I mean, I, I would like to say that the issue of Israel and Palestine, for example, is about having the staying power of the Netanyahu and group to be able to continue to do what they want to do until they are, they totally can decimate the opposition to the point that, that there will be no major country that can support the Palestinians. So this, if I have any Thing to plead to the president, do not fight them in the way they want you to fight because they will kill you more and more. If you kill a hundred, they kill ten thousand. What is the value of that? Especially if the ten thousand are young people. There must be another way of doing this. And so, so this process is happening. And that's just all this colonization of the mind. We, we see it as violent. Oh, you don't kill the Jews. But they don't see the other things that are attendant to that. So uh, I can speak all day about it, but there are the other preoccupations of our society now that makes it very difficult to just try to deal with the colonization of the mind. If I just can uh, continue the discussion, if you say that uh, you cannot fight them in the traditional ways, uh, because they have power, what would be some of the ways uh, by which we could challenge them? What would be some of the novel ways that we can uh, challenge them that can move us forward? Well, I am not uh, an authority on this. Uh, maybe the professor from Cambridge perhaps can say something. But I mean, obviously, we need to to be able to get access or entry point to the institutions that these other people have. If you cannot have a story told because the news is controlled, then nobody knows about this news or not able to be dramatized enough. So there are so many things that have to be done. Uh, Matt Beader like Gaddafi was thinking about this a long time ago. But he went the other way and uh, Became, began to aggrandize his own power. And that's, that's a big disappointment. He started with the right uh, premises. So we can go on like this. So, uh, I can't really suggest a compendium of methods that we should employ. But bottom line, we must get the concerned people, we must get the important people, or strategize them that we must get communities other than Islamic communities to support us. Yes. I will now ask uh, uh, Sanju. Right. Yeah, okay, you want to? Uh, yes, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, basically, I think that change, social and political and economic change, come from two sources. One is the internal contradiction of the ruling power. So, 
the, the contradictions which we see in the world today is that the power of the old colonial imperialist uh, 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 powers which are there is gone weaker and weaker and weaker. Last month, I think it was, that the total GDP of China reached a level higher than the US, which was for, for, for a century or so, it was not the case. The uh, uh, contradictions, we, we are talking about decolonizing power and decolonizing knowledge, which is basically decolonizing power. The fact that now we are questioning, uh, uh, and a lot of people are questioning uh, the, the ruling power, uh, gives you the idea that they are not able to rule as they used to for centuries. So the contradictions are there of a weakening power. The second source of change is when the people who are oppressed and exploited start coming in motion. So social movements generate power. And what we've seen in the latest Israeli aggression against Gaza was that millions of people around the world were demonstrating and, and you might say, okay, they still kill 2,500 uh, 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 Palestinians, the Israelis, but the whole process brought together a, a, a dynamics where even uh, uh, the, the, the Palestinian Authority, which is paid by the United States, is threatening to bring Israel to the international court, which was unthinkable uh, a few years ago. So I think that when we start with uh, strengthening the social movements, and they will be there, we, uh, whether we like it or not, then the, then the other side will move. So I'm personally very optimistic about the power of social movements, although sometimes it seems as if they have no power. I, uh, once more I go to, to conclude, in Holland, there are black people who are mobilizing against the racist character of black people, which is an annual celebration. Uh, years ago, black people were talking about it, but they never challenged the stereotypes in the street when they have these annual processions. Uh, uh, last month, uh, two months ago, uh, uh, hundreds of people were arrested. I was among one of them in demonstrations against black people, and which showed you how the mind change of people out there that they don't accept the old way of doing things and we should encourage the youth to come out and mobilize and don't be afraid to challenge authority. Thank you. And there's a very interesting uh, book called Blessed Unrest and it's an interesting survey of social movements all over the world that are actually making a difference. And people don't notice them because very often when new things are happening, they seem to be small, but they are making changes. Eh? And I think some of the points you were making on how thinking is changing, even in those countries which we describe as colonial powers, because very often when they were colonial powers, they were not only colonial powers of other countries, they were also colonial powers in the same way very often in their own country. And so uh, there is a, another kind of world outside through which unity uh, is uh, made. And uh, just like the movement of moderates, there are people all over the world that share a certain common wisdom, a common kind of feel for making a change uh, in the world. And that particular power, I think you are, you are suggesting, you're suggesting to is one we have to build up and this means transcending uh, even just simple concepts of north south east west uh, it's to going to the people who are wanting change who recognize that you can see the evil within the present systems and want to see a new kind of good that will operate in yes now uh, dr parsani has been uh, speaking uh, last two three days about uh, his uh, attempt to construct 
uh, Islamic sociology, Islamic anthropology, and all these. Now, there is in all these sciences as originally conceived uh, from the Europeans from the 19th century onwards, these sciences came at the time when colonialism was inaugurated. They had certain reasons for which they were created, not only in relation to their own societies, but in relation to societies outside. For example, uh, Europeans kept sociology for themselves, anthropology for people outside. So there was a very clear division. You never had any person from Asia doing anthropology on Europe. That was not permitted. Because anthropology was only supposed to be done by victors on the vanquished. There was no right, there was no two-way street about it. Now, by bringing it within the framework of Islam, calling it an Islamic anthropology, Islamic sociology, does it change things? Because the inherent structure of the science is defective. It is anti-human. It is materialist. And just by putting in, looking at it in a different way, is it going to improve matters? Is it going to improve welfare? These are questions that I would like to pose to him after listening to him in the morning. خودش از 
اونها پیدا کرده این شناخ رو منتقل میکنه به اونها تا اونها هم اونطور که اینها براشون شناس نامی تولید میکنند خودشون رو بشناسند And the second use and, uh, of anthropology is that when it comes into an area, it even gives the ideas of anthropology to those persons who are living there, so that those people would also understand themselves through those concepts. So whenever we understand ourselves through an anthropological understanding, we will completely lose our essence and existence. چون هویت هر انسان به معرفتشه because the essence of all human beings depends on their own epistemology مولوی که شاید میشناسید میگه ای برادر تو همه اندیشه ای ما به خود استخان و ریشه ای he's reciting a poem I don't know how to understand it so he says that رومی مولوی talks about how I'll translate the poem but he says oh brother you are all thought And without thought, you're only bones and skin. اما من وقتی که ما میگیم که ما باید سوژه باشیم نه اوبجه و از منظر فرهنگ خودمون و معانی خودمون خودمون رو بشناسیم این ادعایی است که من داشتم. And when we say that we should not only we should not be only subjects and objects, but we should also understand our cultures, this is what I'm talking about. We must be also sure. Oh, we, we should also be uh, subjects and objects ourselves. And the West has to turn into an object for us. But my main question is this. What language should I use to do this? All our, all our language has been captured and dominated. من وقتی که میگم علم اجتماعی متناسب با خودمون داشته باشیم چه لغتی به کار ببرم؟ When I talk about a social studies or a social science that is related to us, what language can I use? لغات و مفاهیم سنگرهایی هستند که فرهنگ رو حفظ میکنند. The uh, the uh, the words and the concepts act as barriers to safeguard the culture. معنا توی این سنگرها خانه کردن and the meanings have hidden themselves behind these barriers کاری که قرب کرده اومده سنگرهای ما رو گرفته و سرباسهای خودش رو توش گذاشته so what the west has done is that they have taken our barriers and they have placed their own uh, army inside them من توی صحبت هم گفتم من لفظ این رو که قرآن و عقل رو در قرآن و در فرهنگ اسلامی هست به کار میبرم Uh, as I already mentioned in my speech, that when I use the term il or ab, these concepts that exist in the Quran. اما با این مصیبت چه کار بکنیم که جامعه علمی ما ال رو معادل ساینس کنیم؟ But what can we do with this catastrophe that they have turned ال into science? و شما خودتون میدونید که بر یک بار این مصیبت رو بر سر خودش وارد کرده. And you know that the same thing has happened once. Uh, from the West on itself. یعنی اون یه بار در لغات خودش تصرف کرد و معانی جدید در اونها گذاشت. And it has once uh, taken its own words and placed new meanings into its own words. روایت های جدیدی رو and created new گفتم uh, okay. okay. narratives as you said. و مثلا ساینس یک معنای دیگه داشت تا قرن 19 معادل فلسفی به کار برده میشد. And for example science had a different meaning and until the 19th century it was used equal as an equal word with philosophy. اما الان یه طوری به کار برده میشه مثل این لغات ازلی و ابدی بودن. But now it's used in a manner as if they were eternal. These words were eternal. سایه کونت و کانت و مرجعیت اون اگوس کونت و اسمانویل کانت این مرجعیت این دوتا بر روی جامعه علمی جهان مدرن بختک رو چیلی میتونیم مثل بختک افتاده بعد از Widespread influence have, and Kant, the, uh, have casted their shadows on uh, all uh, living beings. And 
they are in some way the philosophers of this world. And we are seeing ourselves within the, their shadows. Is it possible to break this shadow for our is it possible for the academic world to break this channel? The general culture of our own people is not like this. We are bringing pressure from the area of our general population on our academics from Iran. مسئله بود که از دل این فرهنگ با عقبه تاریخی معرفتی خودش برخواست. And the uh, Islamic revolution was uh, something that rose, uh, raised from the heart of this uh, general population. ما قدرت سیاسی غرب رو در اولین قدم با انقلاب در هم شکستیم. So we actually demolished the, uh, the political power of the West with this revolution. با تمسکی به فرهنگمون با اقتصادشون داریم دست و پنجه خورد میکنیم. With the use of our culture, we're trying to fight with their economy. اما با این اقتدار علمیش چه کار کنیم؟ But what can we do with this academic dominance? این مشکل ترین کاری است که توی ایران در دیدش هست. This is the most difficult thing that we're facing today. Thank you. Shivan, how much time do we have? We don't have much time left. About 10 minutes? You have a session after this, right? Yes. So we take uh, 15 minutes?